I'm going to balance my camera on this polka dot cup and it's going to work. Okay, it worked. We are here and we are good. We are good to go. Anyway, um, eclipse season is back and this eclipse looks gnarly. Good, good content. <laughs> Chaos before midterms or during or around that time, always nice. So if you're excited to dive into what exactly we can expect from this solar eclipse in Scorpio, make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you are always up to date with what the stars have in store for you. It's kind of funny because I usually have these really nice, beautiful like backgrounds for me when I'm traveling. I'm literally like on the floor of my friend's apartment that I'm house sitting for the week, just chilling here on the ground for this major, major update. Solid background, natural light though, can't complain. So with the solar eclipse, I'm first going to explain what's going into it. Then I'm going to explain the world event charts and how it's playing into the world, offer some predictions. And if you have not already seen your October or November videos for your rising sign to see how this is going to play into your chart and then November is gonna play into your chart, feel free to watch those as well to understand where this is showing up in your own life. And I have a full October predictions video and we'll probably do a follow-up video closer to the date because I am filming this in the first week of September. So near to the eclipse, not October, I'll be able to offer more context and how I see this playing out that's relevant. But to begin, this is happening on October 25th, 2022 at 3.49 a.m. Pacific time or 6.49 a.m. Eastern time in the U.S. The sun, moon, and Venus are all at two degrees in the first decan of Scorpio. So decans are the third parts and the first 10 degrees are in the first decan of Scorpio. And this is associated with the five of cups tarot card, also known as the Lord of Disappointment. It basically shows that you got what you wanted and you're disappointed in how you feel now. Like getting the thing did not make you feel what you wanted. You realize that when you get to the top and it feels very lonely. And often it's more of a letdown than it would have been had you not gone for it at all. And instead you chose what would feel good in the moment. It's kind of like pursuing a goal that is empty, but you feel like once I get there, I'll be able to feel this. It's not indicative of a failure. Like you definitely achieved something, but emotionally it feels empty. And this solar eclipse, I mean, obviously it's an eclipse, so we can start with that. Eclipses are when the sun and the moon reside on the ecliptic, which is where the sun's orbit is. There's the north node and the south node, the southern points, and eclipses are when the sun and the moon are either opposite on them or very close to one of them. And this one, they're very close to the south node. So solar eclipses are huge new beginnings that are catalyst events over the next six months. And if you want a whole video on what eclipses are in people's charts and how to look at them, I have a full video on eclipses and also a video on why I would not manifest or start anything around them. I was born under a solar eclipse right after one um, in Virgo and it's an energy that I know very well and I wouldn't recommend beginning anything under, especially with the um, this one being in Scorpio where the moon is in its fall. So solar eclipses, like I said, catalyst new beginnings for the next six months. But the south node is an indicator of decrease, letting go or energy dying down. So it's a new beginning that involves a large scale release. And likely we are some giving up our hopes because we were disappointed. And um, there's a lot of value in what we are gaining the space from. But but with the moon in its fall and Venus in its exile, because the moon is opposite to the sign that it's exalted in and Venus is opposite to the sign that it is at home in, there's a lot of discomfort in feelings and looks like an inverted or extremely difficult emotional time. But with the south node, it looks like we are cutting ties or releasing some kind of attachment that does pull at our heartstrings and is very, very heartfelt. Trying to find a better word, but like you get it. It's sappy, but it's very intense. Scorpio is still waters run deep. It's not Cancer or Pisces, which is a little more lighthearted. In Scorpio, like I said, there's intensity, there's depth, and there's a lot of attachment. And conjunct Venus, it confirms that this is likely a love or value-based tie that we're cutting. It's not just career or money. This is something that we are really, really holding dear. I think that this will mark a huge event around Roe v. Wade and women's issues because with the moon often involving women's menstrual cycle or just women's bodily cycles and Venus often representing women or feminine matters with an eclipse of this configuration it does look like the logical thing for a collective event would be around that and with midterms coming up it could be some proceedings that involve letting go of thinking that it could be reinstated. I say this because the south node usually involves letting go. So when I think about something to let go of, the status quo thinking that this should be, I, I'm actually not sure about metrics about what 
is thought. Um, I don't know the populist agenda or consensus on it. I don't really care. Um, I don't really, you know, look into general polling. It's often very difficult to get accurate. But I feel like with the moon and Venus in their fall and then the letting go indicator of the south node, it looks like a new beginning brought on by the understanding that there will not be a reinstatement of it. Um, I would say that because there's no way I can make this configuration into a letting go of repealment. Like that's just a little bit of mental gymnastics that I think would be what a lot of astrologers might say because of wishful thinking, if I'm frank. Like I saw this and was like, a lot of astrologers are gonna be like Scorpio breaking like ties, like women and like, but the moon and Venus are in their fall. And I am not coming in with any political imposition, nor am I making this any statement around what I, I'm just staying out of it. But I do think that this looks like a discord event around women and women's health, which would likely be like what's going to anger people something around further confirming that Roe v. Wade is not like it's being it's it's repealed it's not being reinstated. The Mars Neptune square shows issues with acting clearly. Mars is action and aggression and Neptune dilutes that and makes it very difficult to be clear and it's ideologically divisive. Mars in Gemini is very ideologically divisive and you can see my full video on the Mars in Gemini transit over the next you know right now I'm filming it we still have about seven months to go. Um, but I think that this will really, really tone the next six months until the next eclipse season around fighting over this because Mars and Gemini, as I'll talk about in the United States 7th house, generally shows civil issues. And with this Mars Neptune square, likely we're unclear what we're even fighting about. And this makes sense because I think a lot of people don't fully understand, at least in this case, for example, the literature and the way of the judicial system around Roe v. Wade or any law, that there's a lot of people thinking like, oh, abortion is outlawed or like thinking it applies all states like there's a lot of lack of clarity so i think that this likely represents fighting over things that are unclear and not widely understood or understood differently. Um, and the Saturn Uranus square is close within one degree, which represents tension between staying conservative and another tension of rebelliousness. But Saturn is direct while Uranus is retrograde. Saturn is also in its own sign and having the upper hand. If you look at the chart, Saturn is 90 degrees ahead of Uranus, indicating that Saturn is fucking Uranus. Like Saturn is the one that's in control here. And Saturn being conservatism with dignity in its own sign leads me as well more to toward this being a no, this is not going to be rebelled or progressed on. And I would just have extreme difficulty looking at this and thinking overall that this is anything forward in acting. This looks like a letting, in our own lives, a letting go of something that is an emotional tie because we're disappointed at what that brought us and we're ready to make new space no matter how painful and like yanking this out of our hearts is. Mercury in Libra is squaring Pluto and Capricorn, which indicates manipulative, divisive communication. Uh, and it looks very paranoid and being very passive aggressive because Mercury in Libra does not like to stir the pot, but squaring Pluto is like, but I'm going to be really passive aggressive about the way that I communicate. I do not like the solar eclipse. I do not like planets in their fall. I do not like planets in their exile, although it's not quite as difficult nearly as planets in their fall. And I do not like eclipses. Uh, they are malefic by nature, not that they are bad, but that eclipses involve destruction. And uh, I say this again as someone with fucking Rahu tattooed down my leg, like this Rahu symbol is there. It says power there because eclipses are powerful and often not in a good way. So I think that was this one on the south node, Venus in its exile and the moon in its fall, it's going to be quite a rude awakening of giving up of something, especially for those of us with placements and early degrees of Taurus or Scorpio. Um, this is literally like uh, the, like opposing my Saturn within a degree, like under a degree. It's at two degrees of Scorpio. My Saturn is at three degrees on my IC. This is very close to my Midheaven, my Chiron, my Lilith. So I'm fucking going through it with you guys. It is squaring my Mars exactly by degree. I know personally for me, like I said in my year ahead predictions video, some shit is going to come out online, like some kind of attack that literally throws my whole life over like whatever and at this point I just throw my hands up and I'm like come for me make more up take more out of context get more pissed off and more jealous please direct that energy at me like that's the kind of vibe I give off but it doesn't mean that when you see someone making up something or really saying something ridiculous you don't get a gut punch and want to be like just make it stop make it stop like that's my immediate reaction but I'm ready to cut the tie and maybe grow up through something that's really an attack and I have to you know grow up and grow through it so that's kind of what I'm interpreting for myself I don't like to see this but you can look at it in my own chart and it looks atrocious so that's that. But for you in your chart, if you already know where it's happening, if you already know the area of life that's going to be triggered for you and you have any thoughts, let me know down below. We'd love to hear what we're all in together.
So in the United States' chart, this is happening in the 12th house of behind the scenes hidden matters. And it is trying Venus and Jupiter in the eighth house, which does look like there are confidentiality documents or ties or financial statements that are kept hidden, that those things are not blown out of proportion or blown up. But Mars is right on the United States natal Mars and Gemini, and it's about to station retrograde. So I think that this event will lead to a rethinking of civil dynamics in the US and further discord as that is examined. So for Biden's chart, given he is a Sagittarius rising, I think that this is also in his 12th house of behind the scenes hidden matters. So any of the information leaks or things that are coming out likely do involve him as well because this is right on his Scorpio stellium with the south node very close to his Mars. And with Mars ruling both the 12th house itself and his fifth house of children and romance, I think there could be something released around Hunter. Um, again, this is not a political statement of anything on me. I'm just saying verbatim, if someone has a 12th house eclipse on the ruler of their fifth house, I'm going to think what's coming out about their children and or a creative project, which like doesn't really fit him as much as something around him. Um, I think revealing very sensitive info behind the scenes that involves his children uh, could be an affair, but like the dude is not having affairs unless we're all being psyoped. Um, so I think the information that released could be bringing in Hunter. And I'm not surprised given that these things are often either held off or made up around election times. For Kamala Harris, this is the one I'm very, very curious about because it's happening in her sixth house of health issues or coworkers right on her natal Mercury in Scorpio. And Mercury is ruling her fourth house of living situation or family and her first house of self. So if I'm having an eclipse in the sixth house of people that she works around and it's on Mercury, which is usually a communication and it's her first house of self, which has Mars right on her ascendant indicating being aggressive, I think it's an announcement that she's making very substantial around the people that she works around and then it may be a re-qualification of her role and stepping up into more authority especially if this is suddenly Biden's health issue like mentally that he has something mental going on because 12th house can be mental health for him that he has some mental health issue going on maybe he's even just very poorly like if something goes on and she has to you know step into something and make some claims and or like step up maybe she's even announcing that she's running or launching a campaign or something like maybe she's like bro I'm running a no I don't think so but there's some announcement she's making around her position and what she's working around that is very aggressive and likely in response to and related to the sensitive information released around Biden. So moving on to some financial charts uh, for Bitcoin, uh, I do have a tweet that says October 28th, take note or something to that effect. That is just a few days after and that is when Jupiter enters Pisces. However, this is then playing into that same thing because this is a new moon technically, solar eclipses are always new moons and they dump as fuck afterward. So this should be very gnarly. This is exactly square Bitcoin's Mercury. Whenever Mercury is activated in a Bitcoin chart, honestly, it's usually overemphasized for really big dumps or pumps. It is trying Bitcoin's Venus, however. So the trying went exact two days before. I think that we pump into this and then dump as fuck after. I don't like this. Um, for Ethereum, Jupiter is near Ethereum's now south node. And for Jupiter showing expansion and the south node being a letting go, I don't think this looks good either, given that's like expanding letting go. The tarot card that I just pulled for this is the moon. Now the moon is actually associated with the sign of Pisces and it revolves around figuring out what's real and what is it. It's like, okay, I'm dreaming, I wake up. What can I take from that delusion that might be valuable still while still realizing that it's not reality and I can't base my world around it. And it's funny because I usually, when I pull up these tarot cards, I have my notes out over the years of what to make sure I hit when I talk about tarot because I'm not very intuitive. So I like to get refreshers and one of the bullet points I have is desires realized and finding the truth of what we want. And with the solar eclipse being the first decan of Scorpio, the Lord of disappointment, being disappointed and getting something we might realize what we really wanted overall. And that it was delusional to think that we really wanted what we thought we did initially and having to get really real and cut those ties. So yeah. If you have any thoughts or comments, I would love to hear about them down below. As always, uh, I will have a video closer with updates and like playing into political themes and always um, that are more relevant during that time since it is so September when I'm filming this now, but I hope that you'll have a lovely eclipse. <laughs> All right, let's hope. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, there is one.